So now we have two very important people to talk to us. Um, we have the Honourable Dr. Ifarimi Wakianabeti, and we also have Her Excellency Dasho Dekin Wangmo. She's the only female minister in the current um, cabinet of Bhutan, and she is now in charge of the Ministry of Health. And prior to joining politics in 2018, Her Excellency worked as a public health international consultant with a primary focus on health systems, governance, policy, and strategic planning for governments and civil societies in many countries, such as the USA, India, Nepal, Bangladesh, PNG, Myanmar, Sri Lanka, Thailand, and Senegal. Um, and in 2020, in recognition of her outstanding service to the nation, she was conferred the Red Scarf, which is one of the highest honours a Bhutanese civilian can attain, and she was awarded that by His Majesty the King. She is also founder of the Bhutan Cancer Society, a CSO working for the well-being of cancer patients in Bhutan, and a founding chairperson for Laksam HIV Positive Network in the country. So I'd like to welcome to the ANEC conference and hand over to Her Excellency Dasho Dekin Wangmo. And thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for the wonderful introduction. Um, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the participants, excellencies, distinguished guests, esteemed panelists, speakers, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to join you all today on the second day of the Asia Pacific Regional Conference on Early Childhood Development 2022. Uh, first and foremost, um, let me extend my gratitude to the organizing committee for giving me this opportunity to address the conference on the theme, Young Children in Crisis, Addressing the Impact of COVID-19, Climate Change and Envi Environmental Degradation. Today, as we emerge from the devastating impact of COVID pandemic in many countries exacerbated by the economic hardship, social and political unrest, health and well-being of millions of people across the world are compromised, and in particular, our children. It saddens me to think that the world's youngest children will inherit our problems and bear the impact of the current crisis. As a mother myself to a 10-year-old boy, I cannot help but not have conversations and emotions on the pandemic-induced disruption of health services for our children. As of today, rates of immunization have fallen to the level not seen in few decades. The number of children suffering from wasting, life-threatening forms of malnutrition that is expected to increase by few folds. Escalating political unrest and crisis that will continue to push our children to social and economic hardship. Climate crisis that is worsening in scale and intensity will yet again push 400 million children into, into crisis. Early childhood provides a unique window of opportunity for children's cognitive, social, emotional, and physical development, as we all know, everybody who is gathered today. Therefore, this critical period of a person's life is something that we cannot afford to overlook as policymakers, politicians, leaders in our own respective fields. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, considering the importance and the urgency to make smart investment to enhance holistic early childhood development and well-being, the Royal Government of Bhutan has initiated a series of unprecedented policy and pro programmatic interventions. Under the stewardship of the current government, the accelerating mother and child health policy was conceived designed and approved for implementation. The policy aims to provide comprehensive mother and child services to all pregnant women and mother through enhanced uptake of immunization services, nutritional counseling, growth monitoring, early childhood care, and more importantly, work with other sectors to promote enabling and safe environment for our children to thrive physically, mentally, and socially. 
The comprehensive sets of interventions that will be delivered through this policy is expected to significantly improve health and well-being of our children and keep our global commitment at uh, on momentum. The first two years of their lives, hereby setting an imperative foundation for them to grow into productive and old, uh, healthy adults. While interventions have been conceived, adopted, and rolled out, despite numerous resource and capacity challenges that plagues not just Bhutan, but many low-income countries like mine, the COVID pandemic posed a monumental challenge to our effort. Not only did the pandemic shift the health sector and the government's focus away from such key initiative in the area of early childhood care, but it also impacted overall financing in health sector due to inevitable need to channel fund to the COVID response work. In spite of the challenges, we managed to sustain our high routine immunization coverage and also ensure that our pregnant mother gets the right amount of antenatal and postnatal care. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as we define our vision and reset our system for post-pandemic, millions and large, millions of large and small conversations are needed today between government, international organizations, CSOs, private sectors, scientists, citizens to work collectively towards creating, enabling and safe environment for our children while we continue to generate evidence and learn from each other by maintaining empathy, compassion, and solidarity. We must come together in solidarity to devise solution for these problems before it's too late. We must commit to work together to create a world that is safe for our children to live, learn, grow, and thrive. We must make promises for safe and secure world and a healthy planet for our children. And together we must strive to keep them. We must keep our promises to our children and the future generation. I am hopeful that this forum will provide the much needed insight and solution to the challenges we collectively face today. As we discuss and deliberate over the course of next few days, let us all keep in mind that our children need our leadership, commitment, and action to safeguard their well-being. I thank you for your time and Tashidele. Back to you. Thank you, Your Excellency. It's really exciting to hear that new policy that you you've you mentioned. Um, fascinating. I'm I'm I really am excited by that. That's great. Uh, thank you for your time. All right. Um, I'd now like to introduce to everyone the Honourable Dr. Ifarimi Wakanabeti, who is the Fiji's Minister for Health and Medical Services. He's a clinical clinician and medical officer by profession, a specialist surgeon, and he's also been an associate professor in surgery at the Fiji National University and is currently the pre president of the Pacific Islands Surgeons Association. Um, so welcome, doctor, and please, can you uh, share some time with us? Thank you very much, and uh, I'd like to thank you, and uh, also like I say, Bulabinak, and warm greetings to you all from Fiji, and, and uh, to my uh, honorable colleagues, and also those who are listening in. Uh, I'm thrilled to share a few words with uh, fellow champions, advocates, and practitioners in the area of early childhood development at this regional conference. It is also a pleasure to be speaking to this conference alongside my fellow Pacific Minister, Minister Wilbury Hine of the Republic of the Marshall Islands. As proud people of the Pacific, we share many common challenges and priorities, yet our experiences relating to COVID-19, climate change, and environmental degradation are unique. Fiji is emerging from the impacts of COVID-19, which made landfall on our shores in early 2020, just as many other countries around the world. We since had more than 60,000 confirmed cases, 800 deaths, and with over a million vaccine doses. During the first wave of the pandemic, we even weathered a Category 4 cyclone demanding a two-pronged approach 
to respond to post-disaster needs while taking every precaution to prevent coronavirus transmission. Naturally, this placed our health system, broader economy and society under significant strain. Like many countries can relate to, we are getting back on track, learning from our experiences and working to build back better systems and services for our people. The pandemic experience is only reinforced for us that a whole of society approach is essential to progressing early childhood development. <clears throat> As co chair of the Pacific Regional Council for Early Childhood Development, alongside Samoa's Minister for Finance, Honorable Malimulipola Anorosa Ali Mulu, it has been heartening to see council members and countries from around the Pacific proceed with the ECD priorities, in particular with facilitatory community policy, policy making processes to develop national ECD policies, costed action plans, and monitoring frameworks for eight Pacific countries so far. The Council, being the only multi sectoral council for early childhood development globally, is mandated by a call from the Pacific Island Leaders Forum 2018 for a whole of government and whole of society approach to address non-communicable diseases, childhood obesity, and early childhood development. The Council is a custodian of our Pacific Call for Action on ECD, under which five Pacific member countries are committed to nine action points to progressing ECD. For Fiji, we work to protect the very youngest of our citizens by encouraging pregnant women to get vaccinated for coronavirus. This was made possible with the availability of AstraZeneca and Moderna vaccines supported by public awareness advocating the need to be vaccinated if our, our mothers were pregnant. In April 2020, when Tropical Cyclone Harold hit, the country was in the grip of the pandemic. Response teams worked to sanitize evacuation centers, monitor centers for overcrowding, medically screened response officials, and sanitize supplies bound for affected islands. We did not neglect to plan for the usual public health concerns compounded by the pandemic, ensuring that officials reduce the sources of lentospirosis, typhoid, dengue, and diarrheal diseases. We had to think comprehensively and act swiftly to ensure that our response to the disaster did not compromise our response to the global pandemic. It was the manifestation of what our Pacific Island Forum calls a two-pronged challenge for the Blue Pacific continent, addressing the ongoing impacts of climate change while mitigating the impacts of the pandemic. Fiji's Climate Change Act of 2021 encompasses the principle of intergenerational equity, that the well-being of current and future generations are supported and protected. This includes full acknowledgement of the rights of the health and rights of persons and children with disabilities. Disrupted home environments, food and water security, toxic stress and interrupted schooling are just some of the challenges facing young Pacific children in the face of climate change, placing them at a disproportionate risk. For this reason, ECD must be included in climate and resilient policy and investments. Our National Health Security Plan for 2020 to 2025 underscores our drive for equitable health services for all, with leaving no one behind. We cannot leave our younger citizens behind, and our investment and policies and actions must reflect this. Investing in our children and their families now prevents our families from going into poverty and helps reinforce our society's strength and stability. Fiji has convened a national ECD advisory committee to oversee the policy development. And through this committee, we will work across multiple sectors from finance to education, health and justice, to ensure that we have a draft policy instrument that reflects a whole of common approach. In addition to the eight countries in the Pacific developing ECD policies, cost reduction plans and monitoring frameworks, a 15 country Pacific regional status survey on ECD is underway this year. The survey will identify ECD achievements, needs and plans and propose regional recommendations for action. Fiji is also pleased to host the upcoming Pacific Regional ECD Forum in, in February in early 2023, bringing 50 member countries of the Pacific to recommit to our progress towards better investments and outcomes for our young children. In the lead up to our regional ECD Forum, we invite partnerships and collaboration with participants in the conference to share good practice, support knowledge sharing, capacity building between countries and connect with experts to improve policy strategies, etc. In closing, I join my Pacific colleague in welcoming stakeholders to collaborate with us for resilient and more productive futures for our young children, their families, and our communities. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it, and especially given the difficulties in connecting, but we persevered and it was well worth doing that. Thank you so much. 
I'm really um, interested in your multi-sectorial council. I think that's an, a brilliant idea. I like the idea of bringing all those sectors together in some kind of formal organisation uh, to advocate for our children. So that's really exciting.